most high profile cinema films are shot on cameras like these. You could actually rent one of these cameras out for yourself for 2500 a day, not including insurance or most of the necessary stuff to even shoot like a media card. And while that may seem like a lot, when it comes to these high profile films, these are really just tools of the trade and just pales in comparison to the cost of labor and post-production work. If we take a look at Netflix approved camera list, we see these very cameras at the top of the list. And then there's this, Sony's FX3, which retails for a fraction of the cost of a new Area 35 production kit that Unlike the Area 35, you can buy off Amazon and Best Buy. So with cameras like these that are held to such high esteem, why are people like Gareth Edwards, the director of the creator, shooting on a toy camera such as the FX3? Well, let's first review what constitutes as an FX approved camera. An approved camera must have a minimum spherical photo site capture width to record basically what is 4K. Approved codecs are lightly compressed or uncompressed raw or intraframe based codec with at least 4 to 2 chroma subsampling. It must be no less than 10 bit with a data rate of 240 megabits per second at 24 frames per second. And obviously this is recording to when it's recording the card. It must use a scene referred color space and transfer function and must be capable of jam syncing. Ideally, not the time code audio. And then there's a little note at the bottom referring to other attributes to be accounted for. So we know now that the FX3 can at least do all that. What else? Edward said that it came down to just finding a very lightweight small camera because they just wanted to operate the camera for this movie. But if we can simply just make any of the bigger cameras into a lighter camera package, why bother shooting with the FX3 and instead shoot the film on an Airy or Red? Which is what a lot of people have been asking me, sending me articles and YouTube videos about the creator, which is basically a buckbuster shot on a sub $4,000 camera. I think Gareth Edwards thinks very progressively in the same way that myself and my peers do in that sometimes the right job just calls for the right tool. Let's consider the fact that the creator was shot towards the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. We can understand why they have to have a small production crew and also the desire to have a smaller camera package as a result of just having less people. Because honestly, these big cameras really do require a lot of hands on it to just make it do the thing. And then you just have a director who just really enjoys operating the camera. What we get is a guerrilla style of filmmaking reminiscent to a student film, which some people may equate to child's play, but I think it's really just a nostalgic callback to Edward's passion in filmmaking and storytelling of an original sci-fi film. And the movement and the freedom that the camera has really just lends itself to the pacing of the film. He's just a guy who has a really good understanding of post work because of his experience as a VFX artist and just loves a good challenge. If you haven't seen the film yet, I highly recommend it as the FX3 clearly meets the criteria to shoot an entire film just on that one camera as far as Netflix is concerned. And the creator is just the prime example of really pushing this camera to its limits. And honestly, it's really the reason why we purchased this FX3 more than a year ago. In our cases where we shoot a lot of these cooler style films and sometimes honestly we're just limited by the amount of space and so we have to have a smaller crew, the FX line is a convenient tool that allows us to just get up and go and then never miss a beat. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I'm planning to make another video breaking down the rig that was used on the creator, so if you're interested in more content like that, subscribe. And for more videos, click the link right here. Right, right there somewhere here. We're, we're still here, right? It's, uh, it's right there. Right here. Okay. Uh, th this is awkward. Catch you in the next one.